Welcome to Word Blindness, Dyslexia Exposed. I am Juliette Hahn. I'm here with my co-host, Brent Sopel. And we are here to change the narrative. We want to educate, but we also want you guys to understand what it is like to be dyslexic and how things can change. So join us every week for Word Blindness, Dyslexia Exposed. Welcome to Word Blindness. This is Juliette Hahn, and I'm here with my co-host, Brent Sopel. How are you? Top of the morning, and <laughs> headstander. I did. I did. For anyone that was wondering what he's talking about, I did a headstand in yoga today, which I was very impressed. But I've lived a, um, I've, I've kind of lived like four days in, we're, we're, this is 1130 East Coast, and um, I've... <laughs> I feel like I've wow, done like didn't a thousand you say, things. Was it yesterday? You're like, oh, I thought it was Saturday and it was only Wednesday. It was. Mm -hmm. okay. I woke up going, ah, oh, I think it's Saturday. And then I was like, oh no, shit, I can't <laughs> sleep. <laughs> Fuck, it's Wednesday. It's not even like it was a Friday. <laughs> right, or even a Thursday. It was a Wednesday. Yeah. So that's kind of, and not like bad, you know, like some weeks you have where those are like bad and you just need everything to stop. It's not, it's not like anything like really is bad. It's just like, it's just weird. That's the only thing I can say. Well, it's, it's just weird. Mercury grade Uranus or whatever <laughs> the hell it's doing out there. <laughs> Uranus. Whoa, Jupiter or something over there. <laughs> I'm so proud of you for even remembering. Yes, it is Mercury in retrograde. Yeah. Um, and it's I don't think it has anything to do with Uranus, but <laughs> Oh, I thought it was something with that. <laughs> and I think it does because that's I don't know what's been going on this week. Okay. So we we decided to hit record right away because last week or not last week, no. this week, but the episode that's going at that went out last week. We really touched on a very vulnerable IEP last meeting kind of thing, and I'm gonna. I received an email. I started reading it, and I was like, "Oh no, I can't be the only one that's reading this." So I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna send it to Brent. Have him look over it." He stopped at the exact same spot I stopped and decided to send it to him. So. Well, it's to like, little, let's just clarify. It's like three yeah. sentences into a 12 page document. <laughs> yeah, right. Now, someone could say, well, because you're dyslexic, you need yeah, well, to feel like finish, <laughs> finish reading it, but it wasn't that. So, to give a little context, like if you're just joining and you're like, what are they talking about? Like, what are they talking about? Um, I'm going to give you a little context. So, so, my oldest is a senior, and we have been going through, obviously, he was diagnosed young. If you have not heard my story or my son's story, he went to Southport in Connecticut, which is a dyslexic school for three years, but we went through the whole thing to get him there. It's been a long journey, but we've learned a lot as we've gone. And when Brent, you and I connected because your foundation and because the interview I was doing, this has always been so close to my heart, obviously because of my dyslexia, but then going through it with family members my own, you know, child, we really even connected deeper. And then word blindness kind of was like, we need to share our experiences to help other people not go through what we have gone through you being diagnosed at 32. And then, um, but your daughter being diagnosed young and then having a different kind of path than you, it's just all these different stories and all of these different kind of skills we have collected on the way. And we're not alone in this battle. I'm not. I'm not the one. The only one getting diagnosed late in life. You're not the only one getting early, going through this battle. So, for you to share these experiences, very fresh and raw, uh, is you know is obviously courageous by you. But to show everybody else they're not alone in this battle. You know, no matter what school district you're in, whatever state you're in, I think each and every parent. Uh, for the most part, is going is going through this. So, you're not alone in in the, you know in this journey. Uh, no matter who you are, no matter who's listening to this, you know we're going to get into a little bit deeper of what this email said. But it's just you know we tell it raw, we tell it fresh, we tell it you know, gruesome, funny. But the biggest thing is <laughs> you're just not alone in this whole thing, and that's why we're we're telling it really raw, and obviously not I'm not me and so much. It's it's uh, the woman, the unicorn on the other side that's vulnerable right now. So, you know, thank you for doing that. But it's it's interesting. It is. And I have to say, but you have given me the space to be able to do this, right? A couple years ago, I only had a close amount of people that I would even share it with. I would send it like my husband, I would always talk to my mom about it, send it to my husband. And he'd be like, I don't know. I, I mean, we don't know the laws, right? Like these are the things that like, when you're 
and we're educated people. So that's the other thing. That's what always then gets me where I'm like, oh my God, we're in this spot. And then I get angry because I think of the people that yeah. don't have anyone and they just sign a piece of paper because oh. the school sends it to them. And again, the school's doing their job, but it's a business. And so it's not about your kid. Your kid's a number. And so when you said to me, you know, yesterday, or when, when did we record when I was, I mean, I was in tears. That was Monday. That was Monday, <laughs> was Mon- that Monday morning. Yeah. Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, I think it was Monday. I don't know. Whatever. Um, it was the episode that went out last week. And I mean, so you guys are going to get on the heels of this because right afterwards, we get an email and it's from, they call it now in New York. I think it's head of, per, um, what is it? Like personnel services or something. Pupil yeah. personnel services. What? And they changed it Made from special ed. Special ed. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know when that happened. I don't know. Again, where Brent and I are coming from, these are our experiences, but we're learning as we're going. So right now, I want to be very clear. We don't have answers to any of this, but this is what I'm going through. And so we're bringing it up because these are the kind of questions that I need to ask. And we're going to kind of bring it to the forefront for you guys to listen and and kind of hear some of this, what happens and what parents kind of go through. Because again, I opened, I read four things and it basically said, once your son gets his diploma... And I think if that's what it said, his well, region's diploma, he loses his called, service. I just clicked on it. It's called a collaboration portal. Again, is that, I don't know if that's each state, you know, has a different name, name for that. You know, when you, when right. you sent it to me, I'm like, okay, collaboration frontline education.com. So, right. So that's new because usually we get, would get all of our stuff in paper form. So okay. now it's all done over email and okay. it's a portal where all your papers stay. So like all of his IEPs now where they would send it, I have like a file, right? Okay. I would just shove it in. And it, right. it was just like a lot of the times, again, yeah. as a parent that has gone through all of this, and I shared in one of the episodes coming from Connecticut, coming from a school that special at private school, first of all, we were public, then private, then public coming from, and then different states. We had an IEP that was like this big. Yeah. Connecticut allowed you to say what your learning differences were, right? So we could put all dyslexia, dysgraphia, ADHD, dyscalculia, whatever your child has, whatever you have, whatever yeah. your profile is. So when a teacher got it, they could say, oh, okay, I have some understanding or I have no understanding. But in New York, which we didn't know when we moved here full time, it just says LD. And when I saw that, literally my, our, I mean, the school, when we, he came into middle school, they were like, thank you so much for this. I like this, this, this work of basically talking about his strengths and weaknesses. And they shrunk it down to three pages and they handed it back to me. I said, well, wait, what is this? And they're like, oh, this is how we do ours. And I said, so all of the great stuff that you just said to me, thank you so much for having it. And two people read it or one person read it. Now, no one else is getting that. No one else is seeing the insides of his strengths. They're just, and it's like one letter. It was so yeah. annoying. So let me ask you, I got a couple a couple quick thoughts. Okay, who, you just said that one person read it. Who was that person? What was their title? Yeah, so when, and I have to remember back to this. So it was, I believe, the school psychologist in middle school. That was okay. who I, fir- that's who we first went through. And then, it was the head of special ed. Now, the interesting thing, and I'm not going to say what district I'm in if you want to like yeah, yeah. find we, out. But, we don't like, know good details. Saying, yeah, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not yeah. throwing anyone under the bus. Yeah, yeah, this is just our let's experience. Let's clarify. We're not here, you know, Jimmy, we're not here to, to carve any school districts. We're not here to go down any teacher's throats. We're just yeah. telling you our experience and what is out there. And I think the, you made a comment right before we started this that your kid is a number. Now, mm-hmm. how many people looked at us like we have 65 heads when we've said that and they've come back to us later going, you were right. Yeah. And it's sad when they realize it. Cause I remember when I realized it's not a person Correct. to them. Correct. And it, no. and it is hard on, on teachers when they do have a heart and they care and they go into teaching because they really want to really make a difference. And then they realize the business side. I've had people on the podcast that have gotten out of teaching because they couldn't handle that, right? It's the same in other professions, nursing, when you think, okay, I can make, and then all of a sudden it's about the paperwork and all these different things. Yeah, yeah. So it's things for people to think about, right? It's things about that people, if you're someone that's maybe looking to go into a different field or whatever. These are the things to think about. So I believe it was a school psychologist. That was the first person. And then it was 
the spe- head of special ed at the time, our district was, there's been a couple of them. And I, again, didn't know when we moved here, I did have some people say, Ooh, you know what? I don't know. It's not always like there's a couple districts around that we were able to choose from one. They were like, that's going to be better for dyslexia and this and that, but then it's not going to be better for like regular social. My kid's very social. So I was like, okay, we need to think about this. I'm not sending him to the other one, even though educationally it might've been better for him. Socially it wasn't. And athletically. So, so we had to make a choice. And that's what it comes into this. Every kid is different. Mm -hmm. Like Montgomery's different than Truman, you know, Truman's different than Penelope, you know, your three kids, you know, Lila's different than Jayla and, you know, Paul's different than Jake. So each kid is different. So there's no Mm -hmm. copy and paste for each kid. Boom, 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 boom. You know, so that's why we tell these stories in, in depth and in detail so that you can take the information that fits for your kid and play it the way you need to be, or she needs it to be, or he needs it to be. Mm -hmm. And and again, that's why we're doing this. And every time we've talked about, right, that we get on and we talk about, okay, what do we want to, you know, what are we going to discuss today? And the last couple of times we've been like, let's just push record because things are just flowing, right? Things are just coming at us. Like you need to talk about this. You need to talk about this. You need to talk about this. You know, there's, I mean, in the last two weeks, there's been like six different things that have presented yes. with different people that were like, okay, that's a topic. That's a topic. And the reason why, again, we started this and there's so many things coming that are going to come out of all of what you've been doing for years. And that's what I also want the listeners to listen. We're going to be at one point, and I'm not going to give too much information, but we're going to, there's going to be so much more to what we're doing now that is going to help and support. So these are just the starting, starting blocks. So I sent it to you. I, I know like, again, I know my mom's going to have to look at it. My, my mom does not in New York. I'm going to, I need to find again, someone in, in New York. That's like, okay, if you sign that, this is what it's saying. Wow. I think I know what it's saying, but that's a, assum- what, what is your favorite thing? Assumption is Assumption death. Is death. So let me ask you the question. So it said that they're going to take away his services. That's on like the third or fourth line where we both, that's the exact place, stop. I'm like, oh, hey, hold these horses. What do we got going on here? So that's what I did. W- when you had that meeting, whatever that Monday or Tuesday, did they reference, did they talk, well, before I ask that, what services does he have right now? He's a senior in high school. So for you Canadians, that's grade 12. What yeah. services is he using right now? He has. Yeah. So, I mean, I, and I can go off some of them cause I probably should know them better, but they're on a piece of paper somewhere, but you know, he gets untimed testing. He gets notes from the teacher. It used to be like he had preferential seating and stuff like that this past mm-hmm. year. And I think last year he was like, can you please just take that out? Like, I'm so done. I'm fine. Like stop. And I was like, fine. There's different things. Like he's allowed so to use a system for the teacher now. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Well, he's Mr. Personality. I'll tell you that. Um, oh, I wonder so, where he gets and- it from. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, Not you, your husband, uh, Dan, for yeah, sure. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, but those, so those are the kind of things, assistive technology. But there, again, when he was in the private school, there was so much more with assistive technology. Here, we tried it. There's so many interesting things that he was allowed to, this is, and I don't know if we've ever actually talked about this. He was allowed to do speech to text. So this is, again, he went into middle school coming from a dyslexic school where they could do everything speech to text, which, so that was like easy. Everyone had a space in the hall. Everyone had their own, they could get out. They could do mood well around. Yeah. Well, that's and, interesting that you say that because uh, you know, I can branch off that, you know, so when my daughter got to, you know, diagnosed with dysgraphia, you no, know, she got an iPad mm-hmm. and this was Same grade with him. three. You know, and she didn't, and she's, as she said, absolutely fucking not. Obviously she didn't say that in those words, but she goes, no, I'm not going to be the only kid in an iPad. So obviously Mm -hmm. I'm dating myself, you know, now most schools, all kids usually have iPads or computers, right? So Mm -hmm. that technology, she wouldn't, she's, I'm not, I don't want to be that kid. I'm not gonna be that kid. And that was a line I heard every single. She's a senior in college right now. I called her today. She was not happy with me. She was grumpy. Dad, I'm taking final exams. I'll call you later. So, sorry, yeah. sorry, <laughs> just checking. But she's a senior in college. Obviously, she's gone. You know, gone. You know, gone through it. But she's still. I'm not going to be that kid. 
I don't want to be that kid. I don't want to be that kid. But, you know, you're funny. Yeah, you know, I've had a few people talk about you know, voice to text. If you're not able to do what you said, spread out in the room, they're not going to use that. I, you know, and you know, we're good. We've, we think we've talked about it. Um, uh, Ava, you know, in, you know, in Canada, she's not going to do it in the classroom because she's going to be that kid. Mm-hmm. So that voice to text doesn't work. And second series, completely racist, doesn't like the Canadian accent, doesn't listen to me whatsoever. So, you know, so <laughs> technology, again, might be my age, is really hard for me. Mm-hmm. So, again, every person's different. So you may be listening to this, oh, it's just the technology. It, you know, look at paper and pen. And when you're talking about this portal or whatever you want to call it, I'd rather have this binder that I have here of yes. it paper and bring it in. And I'd rather drop this binder on a teacher's desk every year because they're going to look at it. It's a lot easier to skip over an email mm-hmm. than paper for me. Yeah. No. And we talked about that, what, I think three episodes ago that you print everything out. I've gotten better with technology, You're but I, this... But this thing I have to, I know, I'm so good. It's probably, the, I don't know if it's really actually three. So we'll just, we'll just go with it. <laughs> we'll sound like I'm on the ball. But I ha- I need it. I need to print this one out yeah. because I need to look at it and I need to go line for line, which I'm probably not going to completely do once I get the well, understanding of what that means. I'm um, going to. You're gonna... No, I know you will. Well, that's why I, I didn't want, do. I didn't want to pass judgment uh, when I read that, I'm like, okay, I need to stop because I wasn't in your conversation. I wasn't a part of that meeting. So I wanted to get full clarity of what was, I know when you jumped on there, um, when we recorded last time, obviously we were talking about the anxiety and everything with it. So, you know, we didn't really dive into, you said it was a great meeting, but so you didn't dive into if they're taking services away, the adding services, nothing. You just said it was a great meeting, anxiety. So I didn't want to pass any judgments Till mm-hmm. I knew the right information so that I could judge, you know, take a look at, read that rest of the paper, you know, I, which I will absolutely print off and highlight. But I want to make sure I had the right information before I started, you know, judging and getting really angry. No, to- no, totally. And I'm going to go back to a couple things for that right there, though, is when people ask you, like, well, what do you do to keep yourself up on dyslexic stuff? And you're always like, well, and you always said, and I was like, don't say that because you do. You're like, I don't do anything. I don't go back to school and stuff like that. You do things like this. You're going to go through that all and you're going to learn so much about what New York does. And you're going to be that person that is going to be like, okay, I got it. And now I know how to handle New York. And that's what's amazing about you. And that's what a lot of times people don't see. You're going to do that. You're going to ask questions. You're going to ask the right questions. We're going to find the person that we're going to need to ask those questions to. And then you're going to have that as like, arsenal for like, okay, I got New York. I get what they're doing, but but you don't give yourself credit for that. And I'm just going to Well, I know. I appreciate that. And, and it's, it, you know, and um, a lot of people ask me, how are you trying to, um, you know, better educate yourself uh, in the reading area? And that's where I'm like, whoa, no, my scars are, you know, <laughs> hockey was my life. That's what I knew better than anything. Now, there's a couple words, worlds that I know better now than hockey. Mm-hmm. Mental health, addiction, and dyslexia. Yeah. Like, I can sit with anybody in the world and go one for one on what the laws are. Yes, each state is a little bit different in Canada. Every, you know, there's, very, there's differences, but I can go down on emotional... I can do, you know, go to on reading programs. Obviously, you go scientific. It just goes over my head. That's a whole different conversation. But I know this world. Yes, mm-hmm. do I? I don't have a PhD. I don't have a doctorate. I don't have none of that. I've got a, a kid asked me, Coach, do you go to college? I'm like, yeah, College of Hard Knocks. He goes, where's that? I'm like, somewhere hard. <laughs> it's D1. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, that, so but that's the thing. I live but, it. Yeah, my do. life, you know, and you and I spent a lot of time on the phone talking about you know, these things. And I can, you know, confidently say there's not too many people in the world that know more about these were mental health, addiction, and dyslexia than I do. 
It's true. And I love that you said that. And I love that you embrace that because it's really true. So now I want to go back and then we're going to get into this, this letter, but then I want to go back to the assisted technology, kind of like where we were. So yeah. we had all of these different things and that was part of his IEP. And then it was like, you know, notes, if there was, when he was younger, it was like, okay, in math, you got things that were more, not just off the board. It doesn't need to copy off the board spelling, you don't take off of grammar, you know, all these different things that are in IEPs. Yeah, yeah. But those are, those are the ones I can remember. He also goes to a different place to take a test. Now, I fought about getting tests given to him orally, but someone can read his test. So pe people read his test and then he does it this way. I always wanted him to be able to go back and do it because of his dysgraphia. Yeah. Orally, I had to fight and fight. And he finally was like, mom, it's fine. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> Just leave it be. As they get older, they're like, Jesus you know, so yeah. when he, though, when he was diagnosed in the public school in Connecticut, before we went to Southport, he was one of the only ones that had an iPad. There was a couple other people, but the thing that was funny is all because they're like, well, we want that. Why does he get it? So he, it was actually like, he's like, it's fine. Everyone thinks it's cool. I don't love it. He didn't love it. Mm. But when he saw that there were some things that were easier, he kind of was just like, fine. But it was also a very uh, like it was just a different time. We also talked so about your daughter. let me ask you that to bridge off that. I mean, I want to bridge off that. How did you build him up on that portion? I think if I just said to him. Yeah, no, totally. And I'm, I'm trying to, you know, go back. I think it was just like, this is what you're going to need to make school easier. Like, you, you let, let's just go with it and see how it is. And, mm -hmm. and you're always going to need something like schools. Like I would always say to him, like, dude, I understand this. See, then this is where it's different because you didn't get to do this. I'm like, I and understand. That's why I wanted to go with this for people. Yeah. I understand. School's going to, it's never going to be easy. Like, I want to say that to you. And I know that's hard to hear as like, you know, a second, third, I think he was in third grade, third and fourth grader. It's never going to be easy. There's things that are going to be easier. And these are the kind of things that could make it easier. So let's just try it. Let's just see what happens. Let's see what does. Now there was things in the technology world that he wasn't as comfortable with. He didn't grasp mm -hmm. as much. And then again, but the voice to text, I would say to him, it's going to even, this is what I, it's going to even the playing fields. You think that they're so good at, you know, that these kids are so smart and stuff and you are too. You're just, and it just doesn't show in the classroom. Right. And so this is going to even it out. If you're able to use your voice, cause that's what you're so strong at. So again, we went to the his strengths, but, right? You know, and that's why you know, you know that's why I asked that question because I didn't say that to my daughter because I didn't know right. that. You didn't know I just got exactly. Diet, and I'm like, huh? What the fuck is dyslexia? Right. So I never gave that support to my daughter. So I'm sorry, but I, you know, and this is what we always talk about that you know innate confidence that you've known for so long that it's been okay in your house. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was going to be easier. I didn't know what it was. I'm like, I just voice to text. What the fuck? It doesn't, Siri doesn't listen to me. I don't, I, I, I don't know. Like, so my anxiety would guarantee, guarantee penetrated onto my daughter because I didn't, I didn't know what it was. Right. right. I was still learning. So I didn't give, I didn't give her that assurance. I didn't give her that protection. I didn't give her that guidance because I didn't have it. I didn't know what it was. No, totally. And you were also, you know, very deep in your NF oh, your NFL, sorry, your NHL. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> your NHL life that you were also surviving because you were like, if I have to get a you know a real job, so you were in a spot that was a different spot as well. And so just learning this because I think I said to you, well, wasn't that a relief? And you were like, no, I was like, just I want my daughter to be okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm in survivor mode, and I don't even know what that means. I don't know what to do, and so those are also you know, for people listening to this that are, have a similar to you that maybe never knew about it, you know, it's okay that you yeah. weren't there for your kid the way you're like, Oh my God, I didn't do that. Right. That's everyone's journey is different. And we do the best. Like when I work in counsel, you know, I count, you know, again, I don't have my doc and my doctor, but I counsel so many people and it's your past trauma. It's like as parents, you do the best you could with what you had. Mm -hmm. Every one of us could go back and change things. Yes, but we've, we're doing the best with what we had. And maybe it wasn't enough. And we're all sorry. And we all wish we could go back. But that, that's, that's life mm -hmm. and embracing it and being okay with it. You know, everybody's like, oh, are you mad at your parents? Because they didn't know. 
Right. Barely, they were doing the best they could do. This to change the world because dyslexia is not even a word set in certain states. Dude, I'm, th- I'm almost 30, well, 47. You know, in Canada, they didn't know what the hell that was. I went to school with kindergarten to grade eight in one, in one building. You know, like, yeah. no, I'm not mad. You know, my parents did the best they could with the resources they had. And I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't have embraced any help anyway. It's because I didn't know what it was. I was, I've, I've been in su- survivor mode probably for 45 years. I was, I probably was in survivor mode my whole life till I met you. No. And it's, and it's, it's, but it's so true because we've given each other the space and it's also, we've given each other the space to like ask questions, right? Like I handed yeah. that, I sent that to you and I was like, I just, I don't know. I need you to look at it. Like you've asked me like, Hey, can you just look at this? Because we're comfortable knowing that we're not going to judge each other. You know, and I think that's what everyone needs. And that's so important. But so now I'm going to go. So in seventh grade, when we we moved out here, he had all these things that he was able to do at Southport. And I remember I was so I was like, he has to do the voice to text. And finally, one day he came home to me and he said, Mom, I can't do the voice to text. Like I'm I, I go in the hall. So I'm missing the instructions. I also am the kid that's going in the hall. Mm -hmm. with his computer, right? He goes, Mm -hmm. and then anyone that's walking by says, what are you doing in the hall? It picks up on my, on my thing. I have to talk to them. I can't focus. He's Mm -hmm. like, I cannot, but he and I fought about it for a little while until he was able to explain to me that exact thing. Cause I was like, okay, you just don't want to do voice to text because you feel weird. I get it, but can't there be a space? And I would like fight with the teachers. Can't you give him a space? Like, why can't there be a space? And they're like, because we're teaching and we're talking as we're writing, which, you know, again, that's like, uh, like uh, brings me back to being like, like, oh my God, can keep the notes. Uh, I can't oh. walk and chew gum. Never mind talking, right? And, and spell. <laughs> totally. Totally. So, but it wasn't until then. I don't, I don't remember if it was seventh or eighth grade. I feel like we had a whole year where he was supposed to be using it and then they would keep bringing it back. He's not using it. He's not using it. I would say to him, why aren't you using it? Is because you, is it because you feel weird? And was and, he in the, and finally was there a middle school there in New York when you went there? Yeah. So that was seventh and eighth grade. So that's all. Okay. It was only seventh and eighth grade. And you know, so for most people, I'm new to the middle school. I never knew it. I never had a middle school. So I asked that question. I never know if it is a middle school, certain states, you know, some are six, seven, eight, some are eight. And some so districts I always ask that too, question yeah. just for, again, I will, I will never assume anything. Yeah. Yeah. So we took that off kind of, but I said to them, can we keep it? But he does not. Cause then they were trying to force him to do it in the class. Like, this is on your thing. And then he was like, oh, my God. Right. So then it was like a shit show. But he was like, I literally, you know, and then when he started, because, again, he was new. So he's like the kid that's different and new, Mm -hmm. but he does have a personality. So he was able to kind of figure it out. But that was, you know, it was an interesting time. He was just quiet. Right. Exactly. So then it's like, okay, I don't want to be the kid in the hall. But then when he did start making friends and any kid that was out in the hall, again, would stop and talk to him and then it would pick all up and he didn't realize it was picking all up and he couldn't take what he wrote. To, and then he's like, mom, it's making it all harder. And I was like, oh, okay. I Thank you for explaining to me again. Thank goodness I have a kid that can communicate. And thank goodness I have a kid that w- felt open enough to tell me. Because it could have been not, and he just stuffed it, and then and then it became a uh, like a self esteem issue, right? Because it's like, oh my god, I can't do this, and this sucks, and whatever. Finally, he was and like, I'm not doing it. And that's the two dyslexics right there, right? You guys, you mm-hmm. guys, you understood it. That's that connection. So, you know, parents, um, you know, mom or dad, whoever, you know, if you don't have it, and your kid does, you know, it's take that, take that second, listen to this. Mm-hmm. Um, because you, the you're right. You had the openness, and you guys had that comfortability to uh, be able to communicate and talk it through to get to that resolution. Yes, it took some time, but a lot of times, as a parent that doesn't have it, you know, trying to ask or trying to figure out what's going on mm-hmm. can be really, really, really hard. So, don't think you're you're alone. So, ask questions. Continue to ask questions. You know, reach out to. A dyslexic, you know, it's, it's crazy. I, you know, a lot of people, you know, oh, I've never heard it said that way. It's, it's just said in a dyslexic way, I guess. You know, we talk, we, all, we have our own connection, our own language type thing. So mm-hmm. take that time and try not to get frustrated. Right. Cause it's hard for the parent that's not dyslexic too. Because 100 it's like, million percent. 
Yeah. I, I mean, but when he said it, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's really annoying. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was like, I wish you told me last year. He's like, well, I tried, but he couldn't put it into words why he was frustrated. Right. So it's like, you know, again, so these self exploring things. He also found teachers that he was able to do things. I mean, he's, he's learned a lot, this kid. He's learned, he's got a lot of life lessons in 18 years. And, um, you know, the, it's just, it's interesting. So we did have this last meeting last week and it was very emotional. There was no talk about this paper that was going to be sent. So it wasn't like, Hey, we're going to be following up with some paper. Okay. Which, and I'm going to, I have to ask my husband cause maybe I missed it, but I don't think so. Um, Dan, and Dan was on there with you. Dan was, yeah, he was, okay. he was, was in zoom. So he, he Perfect. listened, he, he doesn't. And it's so funny there. I was like, parents, do you have anything to say? And he was kind of looks at me and I <laughs> have a lot to say. And then, um, he will some, if he has a question, he'll ask, but he's usually just, you know, just listens in. So, and I haven't even touched base with him because he was traveling yesterday to be like, Hey, can we look at this together? Because what I think is once he gets his diploma, I think they're talking about at the end of the year. And I think this has to do with that, the retesting. Yeah. But I'm again, not going to assume, I think this has to do with the retesting. And I'm not going to read it till you talk to Dan and give me, what he heard because I want all that. I don't want, I yeah. do for me. I don't want to judge because I'm already no, angry. totally. I'm four lines right. in and I'm fucking angry, ready to jump off the 14th floor and fucking right to the airport and get to New York and you know, beat the shit out of anybody. So I want that information before I go down this. No, but the thing that I think is so funny is you said right before we recorded. So I started reading and then I stopped and I go, Oh my God, I know exactly where you stopped, but wait, I'm going to let you say it. Cause I don't want to assume. And you said, and I go, that's when I stopped. And that's when I sent it to you. So, right. So basically, and I was like, I'm not signing anything. I'm not signing anything at all. I think it has to do with the testing that some colleges require to keep your services. So you have to get tested in the public school. And I know this is, I know this tweaks you in the public school. You have to be tested every three years to maintain the services. We are learning more about this. So we're going to give you more information on this because yes. this has been something that has really come up because again, the test it I, tweaks every me. time tweaks it tweaks me. me tweaks me because I know that they have to take him out of class. I know that they have to ask him these questions. I know he has to do a test that's hard. And it's like these shapes thing. I think it's this drawing shapes things, which I always go back to because I remember doing it and I couldn't draw. And it was uh, like, it brings me back to a really, really bad, really bad like, place. Just the word test. I don't know if <sighs> I, I've shared this on here or not. Like last time I went to the DMV, I had to do a written test. And my oldest son looks at me and says, are you Okay. You just broke out in fucking hives. I'm in hives. I would have been maybe mid thirties. Yeah, I still playing, still playing hockey in hives. I had to do a written test. I'm like test. So I don't care if it's a drug test, any written tests. I I tweak. Well, and that's what Danielle's going through right now. She's like the test. And I was like, okay, honey, this is your, she's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I mean, she's having full on anxiety because of the word test. And that's what you have to get tested to keep yeah. services. And let's talk and, about, you know, quick briefing every three years. I don't get it. So I guess so we can tell the listeners I've been tweaking over this for about a year now. So yeah. I don't understand why you have to retest every three years. Dyslexia just doesn't all of a sudden, you're born with your right brain wired differently. Just all of a sudden, uh, I had, you know, four Red Bulls and I got wings now and my brain's unwired. It doesn't, it doesn't fucking work that way. Like, right. So I don't understand why every three years you have to. I don't understand who gives the tests. I don't understand who writes the tests. I understand who made the tests. So listeners, I'm diving into this <laughs> in, in a very in-depth way for understanding because not not one of the things that on this thing is okay with me or right in my mind mm -hmm. and we have so we i know brent said it's been on his mind for a year we have dove in and asked questions around it we know that we know a couple companies that 
offer these tests, but that doesn't make sense. So we need to find it. You can't get a copy of the test. So we've tried to get copies of the test. We can't get copies of the test because only someone that is certified in giving the test can give it and they can't let it go outside of the building. And mm -hmm. these, they basically, the kid gets taken out and it's, it's hours. I mean, where it's like, and it's usually over like a, a certain amount of time where they have to go through. And it's what my understanding is the reason why they have to give it, it's all funding. So it's like, okay, if you've hit a benchmark, because that is all on the IEPs, if you hit this benchmark, that means the school has done their job. And that means that you are now, and you still have dyslexia. This is what's so frustrating. And this is why I think you, you are, which, which one of the things that I love is you're so black and white. And so there's a lot of gray in this testing and that make, that tweaks you because it's like, well, no, just tell me the freaking answer. Like, this is not well, okay. It's funding thing. It's like, okay. No, so I agree. I know it's, we all know it and we know it's funding. It, it's got yeah. to do with this, but yo, Nikki, you obviously, uh, little Peyton, yo, she just had her test. So, you know, she's got, she's got all the same thing about it. She got the whole, whole bam, but she's gone up 30 grade points in reading um she, she's she's doing better in, in everything because mm -hmm. of the services she mm -hmm. did her three-year test now they want to take her services away so now brent grandpa brent you know <laughs> daddy brent i don't care you know my dyslexic kids starts fucking losing my mind because she got to that point because she has the services so her confidence has gone up. She's a confident young woman. It's amazing watch her. She's in grade six right now. She can hold a conversation, can hold herself, hold her chest high, hold her head high, you know, like a little woman. But you're going to take that away from her? Right. And so that, help so that is... Help you. What the fuck is that? <laughs> so, right. So that is the thing that we're... Yeah, it's it is really maddening. And it is every time. And it's funny, because I said to Montgomery, okay, we might have to do that retesting. And he is like, it's fine. And I'm going to share this, but and it's a little part. He like looked down when he said it's fine, and I was like, yeah, that's he's, yes, he's not yes. right. <laughs> like he's stuffing. But I didn't say anything. I didn't say it because again, we've talked about no 18 year old boy wants their mom to be like, let's talk about feelings right now. Um, <laughs> he'll, you know, later in life, and it's 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 those things, but it's the test. It is those things. And I said, and we talked about this last week, so I'm not going to go too much in depth, but when they were like, okay, he's up on his three year. And I said, well, okay, wait a second. Cause again, I get super tweaked on it, but what they told me, which I was like, okay, I appreciate it. They're saving us from having to go outside to get it. If a college needs it. And this all comes, this all comes from the federal government, right? You have to have things on paper and it's the mm -hmm. whole um disabilities act and yeah. there's a number to it i i know my it, daughter had to do anyway. neuropsych for the adhd so i, I you know i understand yeah. you know, i understand that yep. yeah so the school is the same they're coming from there so they're basically said to me he's got to do it because there's going to be some universities that require it to give him his services others have said we just need his paperwork like the iep and then we're fine. We don't need that retesting. So it depends again on the state. So in Pennsylvania, a school that's looking at him for soccer um, said, you know, they were there yesterday. I, they were meeting with someone in special ed. That was the first thing I asked. I said to my husband and him, just make sure, like, do we need to do that? Because it's not up until April. So he, we have a little bit of leeway where I don't have to get it. Now, his one teacher did say, I'm the one who's giving it Juliet. And I went, okay. And she's like, and I'm not going to say exactly because it's personal yeah, what yeah, she yeah, said. Yeah, and yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, want to yeah. say it over it, throw no, no, her no, no, under the bus because I really, really yeah, like yeah. her. But it, it, I was like, okay, okay. So I felt better. But I know at other times, you know, it's again, you're taken out. You're, you're, you're doing a test that's hard. It's showing you all your weaknesses again. It's throwing them in your face, all the things that you can't do. So just think about that. It's really hard. And it's like, you have to keep doing it. I know that there has to be some sort of systems right? To make things mm -hmm. work. You can't have it the wild, wild west. We know that the best in this space. That's what we're trying not to have, but we need the understanding of, is there something that can be put in place that is better for the child and their mind and their psyche and the parent? But you talk about it's funding. I get it. Okay. So everything that you had mentioned, you know, 
voice record, you know, notes given to them, tests read to them. You tell me where in the fucking God's green earth that costs money. Right. And I think it's because I think it's the person that's giving it has to have a certification so that that's where, but again, I'm not going to assume. I don't, I don't, I don't even know that. And that's why I'm at, again, that's why we're exploring. Yeah. That's why we haven't, right. Like now I can like, let's just say there's, there's some certain reading programs, you know, um, now if you had to hire a reading specialist for a year at, let's just say 75,000, just using numbers. Okay. Mm-hmm. I see that cost, but everything right. that you've mentioned, you know, and for my daughter, they did have to do that. Mm-hmm. They did have to hire, and then at that time it was it was uh, uh, Wilson Reading, so they did bring up, you know. So I get, I get that, but you know, your your every kid has an iPad, so voice record, um, notes given, not taken, you know, n- not being if you got dysgraphia, not being marked on the spelling. Okay, I'm still having a hard time seeing where dollar figures match to this, you know. Right. Okay, you you know, can't correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not. I'm just, you know, again, folks. I'm just trying to get a full understanding. I want a dyslexic life. I started the foundation because I never want a kid to feel the way I do every day. Help me, help me understand this, because to me, it's not making sense. You know, you know, Peyton. I think well, Peyton was the same thing. I think she, I think she had voice record. She had test read to her. Again, where in that is there a cost? Because that's a and, and well, right that and that is a teacher having to get out of a classroom, so they have to hire someone for the classroom. So they have to ha- that that is a person that has to be certified or qualified to do it, or or an aide. Because I think there's an aide that does it. Qualified but, to to read. Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a space. Juliet, it's, I think it's a space. Um, <laughs> Sam drove ten miles. Julia drove six in her great blue Volkswagen. <laughs> you got to be certified for that. No, it's the time. It's the time the teacher has to be taken out. And so they have to have another person to be able to do that. So I think it's an aid. But again, these are all the questions they're asking because we don't know. Well, right. And I'm just assuming correct. that. But correct. But even in, you, there's an aid. In the, in the, again, I, and, I, and, I, and again, this is all assumption. I just I, I'm just not fully understanding. There's there's other aids in there. Right. There's other teachers in there. All right. We need, uh, you know, somebody to write to read that sentence to, to Truman today or to like Brent to Juliet to, you know, Kingdom Come. Wh- wh- like, I'm just not. A, I know it's all funding. I know it comes from the federal government. I'm good with that part. Just give me a why. Right. And the other thing that we wanted to jump into, and it's going to, this is going to open a whole nother can of worms. So we're going to, I'm going to throw it out there and then probably be like, we'll talk about it at a different time. But my, someone was telling me back in the day in New York, when you went into like the gifted and talented pool, you got tested once and then that was it. And a lot of parents had a hard time because like, say your kid just wasn't at the par or whatever, then they can never be tested again to get into the gift and talented. But when you're, uh, you learn different, you're tested every three years. So like what? And so that's, I think it's a state thing. And so let, we're going to throw it out there. If anyone knows that we would love to learn a little bit more about that. We're also doing our back ended research and we didn't want to come with like little pieces. These are the questions that we've had all together. We have a lot of the answers over here, but we're not going to throw them out yet until we have the whole kind of puzzled together to share with you guys. Right. But it just brings us back I again. I the Canadian to, listeners too, doing the same thing, you know, in Canada also. Canada. Yes. No, exactly. Um, because this is something that needs to, it, it's a very broken system. Yeah. And it's every day we are shown how broken it is from, you know, and again, this is going to be really where we have an organized area where we can share all this with you guys <laughs> going through the college process. Oh. I mean, that's another thing. There's the Naviance app that we use here. That's what got, the kids I got have. That and text the... today. Oh, you did? From the mom in Boston. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you need, you can pick my brain because I've <laughs> finally figured it out. But, and again, someone might be like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Friends that I've talked to, they're like, oh, my kid does it all. I don't do any of it. Now, we've talked about on other episodes, I had a lot of <laughs> trauma around my senior year and college. So, there, I'm going to bring it in when, you know, my child's doing this. So 
the common app. You, there's all these different steps that we don't know. They throw up on the kids. They literally give them one day of all of this information where it's like hours of, okay, this is what you guys need to do. This is what you need to do. Now the school's like, yeah. well, we did it over days. And Montgomery was like, okay, I got some of it. Some of it, maybe I wasn't there, whatever, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. It's not, and and they probably have also, I think, as we said, I think there's probably an email that went out that said, we can train the parents on it. That whether I missed or I couldn't make it, I don't know, but I definitely wasn't on the, that, you know, I didn't, I didn't do yeah. that. So yes, the school offers things, but it's still very complicated. It's very complicated. And this is the pro and this is what it is, is that we're, we talk about collecting other dyslexics as we go along, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like we're dumb and dumber. Like we're, all, we're dumb and dumber in the van. <laughs> oh, let's pick them all up. Yeah. Come, on <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> If you're not, we're dyslexic. better looking than Dumb and Dumber, by the way. <laughs> but go ahead. Yes, we are. <laughs> I, I don't know why I had to say that, but I was like, yeah. wait, I pictured them all of a sudden. I was I'm like, not going to go there. I was just going to leave that yeah. one. But I was like, wait a second. Okay, I, I see the reference, but I don't know that. I think we're way better than Dumb and Dumber. But I, I go was ahead. talking about the, the hitchhikers in the van. I, I, <laughs> Aspen, California. Such a great movie, but let's go. That's such it's a good movie. Oh my God. So good. Not dyslexic. <laughs> you'll never understand it. You know, so a lot of the people in power, and what I mean is, you know, a teacher, a principal, a dean, a superintendent, Washington, you know, in Ottawa, in the parliament in Canada, they're not dyslexic. So they don't understand what we're talking about. So this may seem right and logical to them. And it may end up being that way. I just don't have all the right information. Right. And when I'm like, I'm not like Juliet who likes to ask questions. I'm just curious. Not, it's not making sense to me. You were going to say you were curious. <laughs> you, you got the curious George hat for sure. You know what you're getting for your Christmas and birthday? Curious George hat. Except the episode that just went out with Dr. Tim Odegaard, um, he says, Brent, that was a very curious question. And I think I sat there with the biggest grin on my face. I was like, thank you, Tim, for recognizing of, you know, of his curiosity. Yeah. Um, but so these are all the questions, right, that we're asking that we know other parents are asking. And we're going to take it back to that document again. We literally got down five things. And it said, once you get the diploma, or it, it really didn't say once you get the diploma. So like, is it at the end of the year? It, it could have had well, a date. Once you get this, then your services are gone. Unless you do X, Y, and Z. There's no explanation. It's just like, you, it literally says, once you get that diploma, it's kind of like we're out. We're we, we you have you don't have our back, and so I need to ask more questions on that because there's so much more behind it. And then I think there's one line that says, and "What was the name of the diploma?" Too. Having, well, that's a Regents diploma. So people in New York, it don't even get me fucking started. <laughs> don't even get me fucking started. I will what? lose my shit. <laughs> that's a whole nother. And, and episode. I forgot I, about that till you just went off. Now I'm like. Why, why did it just say diploma? Why does it say so? I, I, my question was, is there other diplomas? Now that you're going off and tweaking, yes, I do remember that. So Brent, foot in the mouth. Oh, I literally could fucking scream. But yes, he is getting that diploma, the Regents one. But mm, okay, that's for a whole nother episode. Any of my New York, okay. uh, any of our New York <laughs> listeners uh, or anyone else that's like, what are they talking about? Yes, in New York, there's something called a Regents test. And it's a lot of your grade and it's a test. And you heard how we talked about tests. And so there's certain com combinations they can do, certain ones they can't. It is awful. New York you need to change that. It is awful. And there's, I know so many people like is there whatever. Any other states it's, that have that, Juliet? No, I think New York is the only one. And I oh, could be wrong. Well, I should I put, should I put I, my surprise face on? Right. Yeah. Don't, don't even get me started. So yes, it does say that um, in there, right? When he gets his regent's diploma, then the services are taken away. And so it, it is like, okay, wait, what? And again, it's probably semantics because then I think in the in the, the cover letter, it was like, we've so enjoyed having your son and, you know, he's done such a great job and we're so excited for his next four years at the whatever. It, it, it's just, um, it's these things that you have to be educated. You have to have knowledge. And there's so many people that don't. 
And there's so many parents that don't, that then start little parent groups in, in places. And it's, it's, it's just maddening because again, we're going to learn a lot from this and I'm excited that we kind of got it even though, and I'm so excited that I like read at least four lines before I just was like, Oh, let me just sign this. Um, which so I, I, try I love not how to you do and in I my older life hit a certain part and then, yeah, that's actually going to real good email. So I'm going to say, that's going to be real bad. I'm not going to finish. I'm just going to go. I totally, I literally did that. I mean, I, and you did it exactly at the same time. I mean, it's brilliant. Um, because, <laughs> Because it didn't make sense. It's like, whoa, no. whoa, whoa, whoa. But say someone that like, it's just, it's, ah, oh, it's maddening. There's no context behind it. No, like at the meeting yesterday, you're going to get this letter. It's going to say this, don't panic. This is what it means. So now I have to then, I'm going to call them and be like, what does this mean? And can you guys be better? Set the parent up. Like, well, <laughs> again, now let's, let's take this. You're right. But the problem is, you know, again, why we talk about your kid is just a number, school is a business, because look at our traumas, UCS tweaking, we talk about this, is because those people that you met with don't care. They do this all day. They School was easy. You've never struggled. You're never worried about that, right? So we're coming at it, you know, as people have struggled, that school sucks, you know, all this stuff is... We're trying to affect change. First, we're trying to educate the parents so they don't have to go through this. But then, you know, obviously, I, you know, Juliet knows, and we'll build fill the pieces in later. Uh, what I mean by that, but trying to make change. And you know, the documentary I did here to change the world because that's my that's my goal. And mm-hmm. so that you don't have, you know, those feelings that, that you have, um, I can prevent other parents from having. Exactly. And that's why we're doing this. So, I mean, stay tuned for part probably five, six, seven, eight on this topic, (laughs) because we're only halfway through this year. And, you know, we're in, you know, we're, this is going to be, but this is going to be, there's a reason why I'm going through this now, right? There's a reason why Montgomery is going through this now. And it's the reason why we all gone through our stuff, but the reason why we've connected is because we want other people not to have to struggle as much in this. Yes, you're still going to have your own struggles because everyone's different. Everyone has their different, the way districts and schools and approach things. But if we can give you kind of that, that the armor to be like, here are the questions I need to ask. Here's the knowledge that I have because knowledge is power. Once you have knowledge, you have power and you can handle something. You can change something. You can ask that right question. And what, do, what did I say that when I made you stump and we never really got back to it, but you can be one question away from a different life. You can be one question away from changing a trajectory of a situation. So if you have that one question when you're going into that IEP meeting, it could change your kid's life. And I know oh. that sounds could sound corny, but it's totally not. So we want to give you percent. We want to give you that question. We want to give you that question to you go in, you're powerful, you have the education, and that's why we do what we do. That's why you have the Brent Sobel foundation. That's why we started We're in Blindness. That's why we're going to be doing so much more stuff. Like we're not going away and we're not going to leave you guys out there being like, well, just not well that was faces. great. <laughs> <laughs> we're badass. I would say we're badass bitches. We Rebel not. without a cause. <laughs> but we do yeah. have a cause. Right, 100% right. Rebels with a lot of cause. Like, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, it's so, I'm, I, as you said, we're collecting our kind of our, our dyslexic troops behind us and um, and next to us and aside, aside from us, in front of us. And we have it, we're on a mission, just like your mission, which has been, and you've set that that pathway for us to be able to kind of put this together and these puzzle pieces are coming together. So, you know, thank you for what you always do. And thank you for having that document. And I will get you some, a little bit more context and then we'll be able to come back to you guys and give you more context on that. So thank you again for listening to Word Blindness, Dyslexia Exposed. Rate, review, and share. Again, you do not know who needs to hear this. Seriously, this is important stuff. This is life-changing things that can change the trajectory of someone's life. So please share it with as many people as you know. Thank you. Brent, once again, always. Thank you. Here's George. <laughs> I'm going to start calling you Curious Joe's. I got to get you a nickname. <laughs> <laughs>